going, GM? Good things. How are you? I am good too. Um, so I don't know if we have a lot of. Yeah, we also yeah, we have, have some people uh, attending here. Sorry, that was on my side. Um, so people in the chat, if you can say hello. Oh, Tracy, she's uh, on her deck already, enjoying the sun outside. I hope everybody will enjoy. The weather today because we won't have that kind of weather for the rest of the week uh i'm pretty sure um it's gonna probably turn out a little bit with rain a little bit um but yeah how was your week and good thanks how about you um uh, mine was uh was fun was fun good. um yeah we are uh like since every uh shops and places are, are going into phase two um we are doing everything in our power to open the gym really soon so let's hope that right. this is going to happen right on um, yeah so for the people who are watching uh this podcast just uh stay on our facebook page um and you might uh, hear some great news sooner or later let's hope that let's hope that uh it's uh it's going to be really interesting and we're going to be able to uh open the gym and start our workouts at the gym but more details will come though um so yeah it might start soon so i only have one thing to open but uh off the get-go um <clears throat> yeah this week we're going to talk about pregnancy um so it's um it's going to be pre um, well, pre-pregnancy a little bit, uh, it's going to be briefly talked about that. And also we're going to talk what to do during pregnancy and also post-pregnancy. Um, we are, tr we will try to cover as much as information as possible. All right. Um, but that is a really big topic just uh, off the bat, right? Talking about nutrition. We don't have a nutrition a nutritionist with us today, but Let's hope that, uh, that we will cover some of our um, topics of uh, nutrition enough. And uh, if you do have some information about that, we will provide you some guidelines on, or some books that you can go in it and, and read. You'll find some good information. Uh, we will talk more in our uh, sp scope of practice for me and Deanne, more into MSK situation and a complication during pregnancy and after pregnancy so post postpartum um so that would be more what we're going to cover today but um yeah so feel free to ask any question if you do um if you did uh um had a like delivered lately during the covid i think my sister um was pre-covid she delivered in february um if you know friends that uh, are pregnant right now and uh they would like to have guidance um this is a really good podcast uh to go with so feel free to uh forward this uh this message to them um enough said let's start with um a first question that technically it was jian who was supposed to ask me i guess yes okay so francis as an exercise physiologist can you exercise during pregnancy what are, what are your recommendations that way um, well, back in the day, our parents was uh, probably saying, or our grandparents, depending on your group of age, were saying that we will probably um, uh, be careful to not do physical activity during pregnancy. And uh, they were probably saying, like, stay, sit, sedentary, and all that. But that was back in the day. Now, today, we do have a lot of more information about uh, fitness and we do recommend to do a lot or like continue being physically active even if you're not physically active you can uh, start uh, even during pregnancy um, that's the good thing actually we're saying the opposite today not being physically active so uh, if you are sedentary it might complicate more stuff so um, we are recommending people to be more physically active active these days um um why um there's a lot of reason why we will recommend um to be physically active the first thing would be 
there are some studies that are showing that if you are physically active during pregnancy, uh, the delivery, if I can say that, uh, the delivery would be easier. Um, so it, it shows that delivery might be even easier. So I'm not saying that you're not going to have complication. It's just studies that are showing that it might help you to uh, during the delivery. Also, you want to prevent uh, physical de deterioration. So nine month on sedent sedentary, it's not good because you're going to have atrophy on your muscle. Um, you're going to have, uh, you're going to lose some cardio fit uh, cardiovascular fitness. So it's kind of stuff that you want to uh, keep uh, with you. You also want to um, increase during pregnancy. So it doesn't mean that you, you're physically active during pregnancy that you won't increase your your fitness you will you can um you want also to increase your agility your balance and your flexibility um during pregnancy uh, so these are all the stuff that you want to continue doing and you don't want to lose that um you may have some excessive uh, weight gain but with being physically active it might help you to uh, more control your weight gain because obviously yeah you're gonna wait you're gonna gain weight um that's inev inevitable but you can control it so this is something you can do with physical activity and also diet um you may also have some more intense fatigue so we'll get back to that a little bit later why but um what we can say is if you're physically active uh, it might decrease your intense fatigue during your pregnancy and also it's going to um um, it's, it will um, also reduce the risk of gestational diabetes, hypertension, uh, preeclampsia, um, and bad, bad head, headache, um, lower back pain. Um, and uh, you will uh, recover faster from uh, the childbirth. So these are the reasons why we want you guys to be physically active during pregnancy. Now, if it was um, if it was not physically active, if you were not physically active before, is it better to continue like like this during pregnancy? No, um, certainly not. So I'm. Um, I think most of us know that it's always optimal to be physically active. So before, during, and after pregnancy, and it's certainly never too late to start. And there are definitely some benefits even to starting perhaps later in the game than we should have. So um, starting starting to uh, to resume a uh, regular exercise uh, regime during a pregnancy is is a fine idea for sure. Um, so you can improve a sedentary lifestyle by gradually increasing nearly any type of exercise throughout your day during your pregnancy. So you can keep it simple, easy things like going for a walk or just trying to make, make a conscious effort to get up from sitting uh, several times throughout the day can be really helpful. I wouldn't, for instance, suggest that uh, you decide to run a 5K if you've never been a runner before um, for multiple reasons. Um, of course, uh, the, the body changes during pregnancy in terms of weight, size, and, and posture. Um, so you may not have the uh, fitness level that is required to take on a more intense or uh, active impact activity. Um, so I would also encourage people, and I mean, this is general, not just pregnancy uh, related, but make sure that you find an activity that you enjoy um, so that you'll want to continue it rather than uh, dreading the experience, which makes it a lot easier to procrastinate and not get it done. Um, we also suggest that you talk to your physician or your midwife during your pregnancy to see if you are able to partake, partake in exercise. There are some people where there could be some contraindications, um, particularly those that have pre-existing health conditions. So things Things like hypertension, lung disease, anemia, um, extreme uh, obesity, or diabetes. So for, the, for those groups of people, I would definitely advise that they are cleared by uh, whoever is providing their, uh, their uh, natal care. Um, also, uh, it, ladies that have pregnancy-related problems, such as cervical incompetence, bleeding, preeclampsia, a history of premature labor or low birth weights, um, those should be cleared by healthcare professionals prior to increasing their activity level, just to ensure that everything is safe and in order. But for an average run-of-the-mill pregnancy with a healthy mom and everything is going well, I think resuming a, an exercise program during pregnancy is certainly acceptable. So Francis, um, research-wise, does exercise increase the risk of miscarriage or complications? Um, and also, what about the effects of exercise on breast milk or the growth of the child? 
Um, so according to the Society of Obstetrician and also uh, gene Gynecologists of Canada, and also the Canadian Society of Exercise Physiologists, exercise does not increase the risk of miscarriage or neonatal complications. It also will not affect your breast milk and also your child growth. So it might be myth that you guys heard, but uh, yeah, there's no no studies that are showing the opposite. It will also, I, I will also add that you can uh, use the PSP during your pregnancy. PSP is um, our PSP staff. Um, during your pregnancy, if you don't know where to start or if you would like to uh, start an exercise program. So right now with the COVID, it's even better because we can provide you a personalized program that you can do during this uh, situation, this crisis right now, um, but also like with the, op the the gym that might open in some places, uh, you wanna know how to do it. Like you may not have uh, access to all the gym equipment, so you can use a professional, a health professional to provide you guidance into that. So that would be a really wise thing. And PSP, like I always say every week, they're free. Um, uh, we are, uh, our services for military members and families, so yeah, why not? Um, we will also give a, you an exercise program that you can do during and after your pregnancy uh, during this podcast. So at the end of the podcast, you will have, uh, or even during, you will have some exercise that you can do at home um, or anytime. So, Deanne, when can a person start exercise after delivery? So really, um, that will be uh, as soon as your physician or your midwife gives you the green light, and and that will vary just depending on the on the situation. Um, if there were no complications in a natural delivery, um, your your healthcare providers, be it a physician or a midwife, may recommend that you uh, resume your activity immediately. Um, again, if there is a C-section or, or other things involved, that there might be a delay. So again, we usually recommend when you have a subsequent checkup with your doctor just to check in with them. Um, we also, uh, I think that starting pelvic floor exercise very shortly after delivery um, has been shown to reduce the risk of fu um, future urinary incontinence. Um, so our pelvic floor is made up of several layers of muscle, which are, are on the bottom of, of our pelvic region. Um, these muscles often become slack and overstretched and subsequently weak due to the added weight and pressure during pregnancy as well as the trauma of childbirth. So these muscles really should not be neglected. Um, they play an important role in supporting our pelvic organs as well as controlling bowel and bladder function. Um, to find the correct muscles to contract, pretend you're um, urinating and then stopping the flow without using the muscles of your abdomen, legs, or buttocks. Um, problems with control of this area can really affect people's quality of life moving forward. So that's something that we really encourage people to engage in is, you know, pelvic floor physiotherapy, pelvic floor strengthening. Um, I, I would say there are very few women who uh, go through a pregnancy and a delivery without some compromise of this area. And uh, so certainly something to consider. So, Francis, what guidelines would you recommend pregnant women to follow? Uh, there is a lot of guidelines that you can follow, but the first one is continue working your most important muscle in your body, which is your heart. Um, sorry. Yeah, so you need to continue uh, pumping your heart. So we like to say that um, uh, increase your heart, pump your, your, your heart rates. Uh, by doing so, you will maintain and improve your fitness level increase the placenta's capacity to transfer oxygen and also have a lower lower risk of retaining water. Um, now, it is recommending to do safe cardiovascular exercise like cycling, swimming, walking, cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, or even aqua fitness. Now, for all these uh, physical activity that I'm saying, it's because they have a low risk of injury and low risk of impact. Now, if you never did cross-country skiing, um, you may not want to start doing a new sport or a new fit, uh, physical activity, which uh, you might fall and uh, you may have an injury. They might be. So you can do whatever you were doing, but something that is a low risk. Um, actually, with aqua fitness, which is a really popular fitness that people like to tend uh, to participate during pregnancy 
um, it's very good since it's doing uh, the fitness in the pool and it will decrease the pressure in the joints, which it might increase during the pregnancy. And also you can increase your heart rate without increasing the pressure in the joints. Um, and uh, you also, um, yeah, you will also uh, might be able to increase a bit higher your, your heart rate during um, the fitness in the pool. So that's why it's a really good exercise you can do um, during pregnancy. So for fitness, it's a good thing to do. Jogging is another cardiovascular exercise suitable for the first two trimesters. If uh, it was something that you were doing already before. Um, if not, there is a multiple reason that we would, we might say jogging may not be suitable uh, for a lot of reasons. If you never ran before, your biomechanic of running may not be uh, good, perfect, and you might just create a new injury that even if you were not pregnant, you would uh, create that injury. Uh, is it a good time to uh, to start a new sports that you never did with a high risk of injury? That's questionable. Um, but that would be one of the reasons um, that we would say don't really start something new. Activities that are not recommending during pregnancy are activities that have, has high risk of injury. So the opposite of what I've just said. Um, and uh, they also have impacts. You'll see with a couple of examples I'll, I'll give you, and even lower oxygen uh, level risk. So, for example, basketball. Now, basketball, it's not shooting hoops, all right? So, <laughs> shooting hoops, there's no high risk of injury. You're just shooting some hoops. But playing basketball, it's a sports activity. Even if it's not competitive, there's always risk of impact and injuries. Um, soccer, hockey, uh, downhill skiing, downhill skiing makes sense. Uh, racket sports, mountain biking, combat sports. This is really combat sports is um, it's a high impact injury, um, uh, high impact sports with injury, possible injuries. So you don't want to start that. Scuba diving. This makes sense too. In high altitude sports that are over two thousand five hundred meters, um, over sea level are also risky. Um, you will also need to uh, strengthen your muscles and increase your flexibility to improve your posture, reduce the risk of lower back pain and urinary uh, incontinence. Uh, it is also, um, it will also help you to fully uh, functional, uh, to be fully functional during your pregnancy uh, in your daily basis. Now, keep in mind that you will have some chores, some stuff to do, so you want to be capable of doing all of your chores when you have a growing belly and uh, an increasing or changing your hormones, changing your body. So you wanna be fully functional during that time. Now, what are uh, some common muscle and musculoskeletal disorder that you have seen pregnant patients present with, uh, with and what are the suggestions for the management for that? So um, one common problem uh, that we see in the pregnant population is carpal tunnel syndrome. So most of us have heard of, of carpal tunnel syndrome. Basically, it's a specific group of symptoms that can include tingling, numbness, pain into the fingers and thumb, um, as well as the hand and occasionally in the arm. So these symptoms occur when there's pressure on the median nerve within the wrist. So this is common during pregnancy, um, but fortunately typically resolves after delivery. So the carpal tunnel is a small space or tunnel in the wrist. The undersurface of it is made up by the bones of the wrist, and then it's covered over the top with a ligament uh, called the transverse ligament. A transverse carpal ligament. Um, so the median nerve and several tendons pass through the carpal tunnel um, from the forearm to the hand and uh, the median nerve controls some of the movements of the thumb and it supplies uh, feeling to most of the thumb as well as the index, middle finger and part of the ring finger. So carpal tunnel uh, syndrome occurs when a combination of health conditions and activities put pressure on the median nerve as it passes through the tunnel. Um, anything that decreases the amount of space in the carpal tunnel, anything that increases the amount of tissue in the tunnel, or increases the sensitivity of the median nerve can lead to carpal tunnel syndrome. 
Um, so the swelling that is common in pregnancy, so you know a lot of women won't be able to wear their rings during a pregnancy because their hands have swollen, that same swelling will affect the amount of space in the carpal tunnel. Um, so that will re result in crowding within the tunnel of the structures and uh, the, the median nerve will be pinched and then you end up with the symptoms into the hand. Um, this is uh, seen especially in ladies who work with uh, forceful or repetitive hand movements as well as in cold environments. Um, for instance, uh, cooks that are always in cold water or, or in uh, freezers getting getting meat and whatnot out, they can have a lot of trouble. Um, vibrating equipment is also a risk factor for carpal tunnel syndrome. Um, ladies with preeclampsia, they also have a higher risk. So if the symptoms are not severe, we expect um, non-surgical management. Obviously, having a surgery during a pregnancy is not advisable. Um, so things that we would recommend, uh, the number one recommendation I always make is splinting. So uh, keeping the wrist in a neutral position, particularly over the course of the night when we sleep, sometimes our hands are twisted and torqued, and that further decreases the amount of space in the tunnel. So splinting can be a really effective way to maximize the space for the nerve. Um, we also recommend that people change or avoid activities that cause their symptoms, as well as taking frequent breaks from repetitive tasks. Um, there are specific exercises that we recommend that can stretch and strengthen the muscles in the hand and forearm. And also there are some uh, specific exercises to do to desensitize the, the median nerve that can be really effective. We also look for ways to protect the joints as you go through your daily activities. So basically ergonomics and making sure uh, workspaces and are optimally ergonomic. So unless carpal tunnel symptoms become intolerable, pregnant women should definitely delay surgery until after childbirth. After delivery, the symptoms will often disappear without treatment when the pregnancy-related fluid buildup is no longer an issue. So once we've gotten rid of that uh, catalyst, oftentimes things will go back to normal. So another really, really common one, I'd say there are very few women who go through a pregnancy without lower back pain. Um, so the cause causes for that, it's kind of a multifactorial situation that makes, uh, is the perfect recipe for problems, really. Um, so basically the muscles and connective tissues stretch as the baby grows. So the muscles are unable to contract as strongly and therefore offer less support when they're in a lengthened position. Um, the, your posture will change to accommodate the increased weight and the change in weight distribution. So often with the, you know, the increase in load or, or weight through the belly, ladies will develop um, an excessive forward curvature of the spine. They'll go into a, 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 an increased lordosis, kind of become sway backed for lack of a better word. Um, as well, uh, changing hormone levels cause the ligaments and other connective tissues to soften, which in turn can make the pelvis and back feel weaker. So we have soft softening of the um, ligaments, we have stretching of the muscles so they're no longer working in their optimal positions, and so we end up with a situation where there's more stress because of the extra weight of the baby, and there's also less support for the joints in the back and pelvis, so it's kind of a, a, the perfect storm, if you will. Um, so, so just some suggestions that, you know, anyone can anyone going through a pregnancy can can take to uh, reduce back pain. Um, so we recommend that people wear comfortable, supportive, low-heeled shoes. High heels will further alter the weight distribution and that we need all the help we can get. So that's not gonna help matters. So we also suggest that people avoid prolonged standing. And if they do have to stand, if they can put a stool or something near, near their workstation or wherever they are, so they can put, put the foot of one leg up on that stool to help position the spine in a more neutral position. Um, again, we've talked about in the, the, the podcast about being sedentary. When, when people sit, we encourage them to sit with their backside as far back in the chair as possible and sitting up nice and tall with the chin in. Um, we can put a small cushion in the lower back if required. Um, sometimes people will even hold the bump up just to give a little bit of extra support. There are also some um, belts and whatnot that, that do this. I think we might have a picture of one to show. I'm not sure. And they, they can be really helpful as well. So... Uh, Okay. I see. Yeah. Okay. That's 
So uh, we also encourage people to avoid heavy lifting. Uh, if you need to lift, you should bend your knees, keep a straight back, just like everyone else should really. Um, as we've talked about before, staying active with gentle exercises and stretching can be really helpful, as well as strengthening the pelvic floor. So there's more support and uh, the, the extra weight isn't hanging on the joints, which can be really painful. So just some general tips. Um, so to be aware of posture, you can see there on the picture on the left-hand side, that's a what not to do and then on the right right hand side is better so we encourage people to keep their knees soft don't have the knees locked right back into extension um, we want to stack the pelvis underneath the rib cage um, we want to tilt the pubic pubic bone and breastbone toward each other um, so you can see that on the the very front arrows over top of the bump that's a, a really good suggestion so kind of minimize that sway back, back position we want to keep the shoulders back and down tuck the chin in and think of elongating the back of the neck like a giraffe and that will provide more optimal position the posture that provides um, more support and less load through the joints so basically you know generally speaking change position often to avoid overstressing the joints you are carrying more weight um, and it's important to try to make up for that by uh, adopting some good postural strategies but, so Francis, can you show us some exercises that can be helpful to prevent and manage back pain during pregnancy? I can sure do. Let's get, uh, show you guys that. So, hmm, one of the first exercises would be the cat or cow rounded. So in the gym, we want to show you how to round your back so you can uh, put yourself in that position. So knees on the floor, hands on the floor. And uh, normally you'll feel that uh, your lower back is curved uh, going inside and with that belly, it will increase a little bit more that curve in your lower back. But when you're doing that cow, you want to increase the opposite way. So I, that's why I like to say the cat stretch, you want to like stretch your spine. So you want to curve your back on the opposite way. Um, you can do that. That's a stretching exercise. So when you're doing a stretching exercise, you want to probably increase it for uh, a static position for an amount of time, uh, fixed time. So 20 seconds is good. Uh, you can even hold it for a little bit longer if you want. Um, and you want to repeat multiple times, repeat it multiple times. Sorry for my bad English today. Um, and five times would be good uh, in that situation. Every time after 20 seconds, you want to go back to that neutral position and then curve your back again. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm going. Yeah. So this one here, I don't have two pictures. That's the only pictures for that picture, but you're going to sit uh, on the floor and you want to twist your spine a little bit gently on one side. So a good way to do that is to put your hand on the knee on the opposite knee, and then you, that's going to twist your, your spine just enough. To feel that stretch in that lower back and obviously when you do one side the other side is jealous so you want to do the other side also now the static position it's always recommended to do minimum 20 seconds so that's pretty easy to remember so every exercise that we're going to show you you want to keep it for at least 20 seconds and uh, you can repeat it uh, three times for this one so three times each side that should be uh, good enough for that exercise the, the next one, it's a side stretch. So you're going to feel your, um, your, your uh, upper back and also your lower back stretching by putting your arms above your head, just like you see in that picture. And you want to uh, bring that shoulder um, as far as you can from your hip. So that's going to stretch one side of your back. And then obviously you're going to do the other side. Uh, you want to keep um, your back, I would say straight. You don't want to lean forward or lean backward while doing this exercise. And as you can see, she's using your other arm just to, to give a little bit more support while doing that exercise. So again, that's a really good exercise to do. Um, the clam exercise. So this is on the side. So you're going to uh, lay on one side and uh, you're going to do, that's going to help to increase you're going to feel the pressure in uh, on the side of your legs um so you're just going to open and then close it now there's some machine that you can put in between or balloons or something like that if you want to do the other side but we're focusing on the outside here oops um so that is an exercise that you can repeat 20 times 
Uh, this is not a bodybuilding exercise. Obviously, you, you girls are not really looking for that. So you just want to like do it as um, multiple times. And the weight, it's just your body weight should be good enough in that exercise. But obviously, if you think that using parabands, um, like I just mentioned, you put parabands around your knees. Um, we call these rubber loop bands, but if you don't have that, you have rubber bands, you can just like uh, do a knot and then you're going to be good enough. That's a way of increasing your your weight if you want to. Um, the child pose um, is this one here. Um, and then you're, that's going to stretch your lower back. Um, and uh, you're going to, you want to do that. You can use a pillow just to uh, help yourself to uh, be more comfortable during that exercise. So um, these are the exercises you can do to lower the, the back pain that you can have during pregnancy. And I would say don't start um, when you have back pain, I would say start as soon as you can, because that's going to help you to prevent any back pain during that time. Now, Jian, when would you suggest that ladies experiencing back pain during pregnancy seek medical attention? So um, I would advise that people speak to their GP or midwife um, if their their pain is significant enough that it's really affecting their quality of life, um, and in which case they may refer you to physio. I think it's important to remember that some of our tricks that we use as physiotherapists, things like dry needling, even spinal manipulation, we are pretty cautious to use those things during pregnancy. A lot of how we treat people will be with more gentle hands-on therapy as opposed to the more aggressive stuff, as well as um, through exercise. So um, physiotherapy it can definitely be an option, but you may find if you've if you've done treatment before that some of the, the things that have been used, we will be a little bit more reluctant to, to employ them with a uh, pregnant person just because of risk. Um, so what I would advise in terms of um, seeking urgent medical attention would be uh, back pain as well as loss of feeling in one or both of your legs, uh, your butt or your uh, saddle area. So basically the part of your bike or body that would be in touch with the bike seat. So that is that is something that needs to be addressed urgently. Um, as well, uh, if you lose uh, urinary control, that's a, an, an urgent situation. Um, if you feel intense cramping pain uh, in the spine at the start of the second or third trimester, um, we also recommend that you seek care because that could be a sign of early labor. We also uh, would recommend that if you have back pain in the presence of a fever or bleeding or painful urination, that you seek medical attention because that can be a sign of a urinary tract infection. Um, and pain under your ribs on one or both sides, that can also be something that uh, requires medical attention in the presence of back pain. Um, and a sudden increase in urinary urgency, that's something else that uh, I would recommend that people people go in and be seen. So Francis, just in terms of other suggestions, what would you recommend in terms of managing a sore back during pregnancy? Um, one of the good recommendation would be sleep on your side. So sleeping on your side in the last trimester, particularly because you do have a really, um, another child and, um, and that takes a lot of space. Um, if you, um, if you um, sleep on one side, um, your left side has this optimized circulation to the penis. So keeping one both knee slightly bent and a pillow between your knees, I actually am not even pregnant and I do that. Um, it's going to help you to uh, release pressure on, on unwanted region. Uh, some ladies also place pillows underneath their abdomen and behind their backs. If you, pre if you prefer to sleep, on your back, use a pillow beneath your uh, your bent knees um, to keep your spine in a more neutral position. So these are tricks um, to help you release or reduce that. You can also try a hot pack or ice uh, or massage. So while evidence to support their effectiveness, uh, effective, effectiveness, hey, Jesus, today my English is very bad, um, <laughs> massage, or the application of a heating pad or ice pack to your back it might help so it's a try and error so you could try it it helps good if it doesn't help that's all right too you can try other stuff include physical physical activity in, in your daily routine so um, as we mentioned and we're going to give you other exercise you want to help yourself to increase um, help your joints actually so you want to increase your 
muscular uh, muscular fitness and also your cardio fitness um, to be a little bit more stronger and prevent any bad posture like we explained earlier. So uh, that would be my recommendation so far. So I'd really recommend to you, like I, I mentioned briefly before, but please remember that problems such as lingering back pain, issues with incontinence after delivery can often be effectively treated with physiotherapy. So don't be afraid to ask for help. I've talked to lots of women that are struggling with urinary incontinence, and they just thought that that was life, that they had to live that way. And and that is not the case um, for most people. I mean, of course, there'll be some cases that, that aren't treatable, but it's definitely worth looking into and seeing if there is something to give you your life back essentially so so don't be afraid to ask for help for sure um just a couple other points about knowing when to con consult your healthcare provider so again severe back pain during pregnancy back pain that lasts more than two weeks you'll want to talk to your doctor about that uh, who may recommend uh, medication um again i'd be careful taking medication on my own without recommendations uh when when people are expecting um so again, just remembering that back pain during pregnancy could be a result of um, abnormal loads and whatnot, like we talked about before, but it can also be a sign of preterm term labor or urinary tract infections. So uh, again, if you have back pain that's accompanied by vaginal bleeding, fever, or burning during your nation, contact your healthcare provider right away. So Francis, do you have any exercises that you would recommend or give during pregnancy and postpartum? There is a lot of exercises that you can follow now. I just uh, uh, sent the handouts um, for people who want to download while I'm going to switch to share my screen and show you the documents. So um, I'll try to cover as much as, we, as I can, but there's a lot of content in these documents. The first one that uh, you would like to use um, or to follow, there is an organism in Quebec that it's called Kino Quebec. Um, that they did um, a document and you will find all what I'm going to say into that document. So let's start with this one right here. These are uh, some document. Uh, do uh, this is a fitness program that you can do while being uh, pregnant and you have all the, the, the information now probably on the screen that you are looking right now. It's probably not really clear. But uh, as I can, uh, as I said already, you can download um, the documents that I sent you. But it will also have the links under uh, the YouTube uh, channel. You can also click on the link and uh, go get the document that we are showing right now. Now, it's not a page like this you're gonna find in the document. It's actually multiple pages, um, and I just put all the multiple pages all in one picture. But you can see all the exercises you can do. That's the first thing that you can try to follow uh, while you are a pregnant. So that's a really good document because you do have uh, some uh, different type of exercises you can do. And uh, all the exercises that you, you see, most of them are calisthenic, which means you use your body weight and uh, you're not using any equipment. So right now with the COVID, it's kind of a really good uh, option right now. So you can do that at home. Uh, there's also a document that the military did, the TSP did, um, and, oh, no, that's not the one, um, <laughs> sorry, uh, where is it, it's right here. So this is, I think it's not as clear as the other one, but again, it's a document that you can find uh, in the link, and uh, in this document, you will find a program. Now, these program uh, that they did is a program that you can use at a, at a gym, uh, you might need some gym equipment. Probably you have all the equipment at home, but there's some equipment that you can use at the gym. And uh, it's made as a circuit. So these exercises, uh, I would recommend um, if you do have access to a gym. Now, I, again, it's a variety, okay? So you, if you want to do some muscle uh, fitness exercise, you can pick one or the other. And on that program, or with all the pictures that I'm showing right now, there is, uh, I think it's four type of programs. So one upper body, it's a one circuit. Uh, so obviously there's another one, uh, circuit number two that you can do. There's a lower body circuit one and there's a lower body circuit two. So you can do all these exercises during pregnancy. Now, after pregnancy, you also, that was the document that I just opened. So that was, uh, this is another uh, document. This is what I like a lot because 
um, you have a child and uh, you want to like uh, be active, be physically active, but it's kind of hard because the, the child will need a lot of attention. Now, might as well uh, not find a sitter. You can do all the fitness with your child. The child becomes uh, your the body weight or the, the equipment, the gym equipment. And as um, bigger he gets or she gets, um, the program can change also. So I'm zooming to show you um, like the from birth, what you can do with the child. And then the more the child will grow up, you see you have here like at six month-ish, um, here you have at the age of one, what you can do, so it's a little bit bigger, but uh, a bigger child, but also like you can use you can use a child and your husband or um, another person to do the exercise. You can also have fun at that time um, during this exercise. So these exercises it goes to the age of three. So I would say um, the first three years you have a program that you can do with your child. So these are more fun exercise, I would say, at that, at that age or age of three. So, um, and that's the main goal when you do a fitness exercise with a person or with only by yourself, uh, the first goal is to have fun. So this might in increase, um, and you're going to incorporate a, a good lifestyle to your child, uh, since birth. So this is a good way to start, um, with your child. Um, what I will show you is there's both, um, uh, documents are in English and French, so you can download um, all the uh, document here. This document here um, is from the CSEP, so I will show you where to get that. That was the, the website that was not ready when we started. So when you go on the CSEP guidelines, the Canadian Society of Exercise Physiology, um, uh, you can find or you can just write down CSEP, C S E P guidelines with an S point C, uh, dot C A, and then you'll find it. You'll find uh, guidelines for pregnancy. So when you go on pregnancy, you can follow all the guidelines. So download the guidelines. That's the document I have. And uh, you do have some recommendation here. So um, they recommend you a lot of stuff, uh, six points, and then a uh, contraindication contra indication that you can follow also so these are good documents that you can follow um, during uh, pregnancy so this document I'm pretty sure I put it in the handouts and uh, you have in that document all the all, all the information that you have in uh, on the website um, <clears throat> so the document that I with the program that I was showing you is uh, called active for two um, physical activity during and after pregnancy. And uh, this is a document that was made, like I said, uh, by Kino Quebec. Um, and uh, it's uh, not that old document. I think it was in 2012 or 13, 2012, um, that they did that document. And you can find in this document, a lot of myth, a lot of uh, myth that is gonna be solved, like things that you hear that probably your parents are telling you not to do or not to follow and you will find um, information in this document that will also give you with the studies so we're kind of like breaking the myth and then at the end of the document oh this is a really good one that's a picture I think I sent you guys uh, this is the Borg scale so what we what we want you to follow while you're doing your fitness exercise is the Borg scale the Borg scale is a uh, actually, if you never heard that or saw that before, um, it's a, a scale out of 20 that uh, we want to perceive your exertion. So when you're at six, when we use the, because you can find some scale that it's going to be out of 10. Um, but if it's out of 20, it's going to start at six because before that, it's basically when you're uh, sedentary, you're sitting and not doing anything. Um, after that is how you perceive your exertion. So. You see the scale here, it's um, a perception, like I said, so uh, I'm going to give you another way to uh, to know um, uh, of where you are on the scale. But when you find that it's very, very light or somewhat light or fairly light, uh, you're not um, in the good zone. 
Where you want to go is somewhat hard, which is between 12 and 14. Now, another way to know if you're in a somewhat hard uh, type of exercise, it's the breathing exercise. So if you're capable of having a discussion with a person, but you're catching your breath um, while talking, this is going to be somewhat hard. If you are incapable of having a good discussion with a person and you're only catching your breath, you're, you will be above 14. So I would say de uh, decrease your level of intensity during that situation. Um, that, that is a good uh, information and it does explain it in that document. You will find the top test right here as an information and this scale of the book scale like the explanation in that document. So go ahead and download that document. Like I said, it's free. Um, and you can find at the end of the program, let me get there, uh, some information. No, the prescription. So the program. There you go. These are the exercises that I just showed you. And uh, you will find this in the document. The other one was uh, the military one. Um, actually, what I will show you. There you go. This is the second uh, document from Kino Quebec that is showing you what to do after childbirth so with your child after you uh, deliver it so you have another document that has a lot of information in it and it will tell you uh, how to start your life uh, start the life of your kid in a good way to be physically active and also uh, how to regain your fitness and re go back to your uh, lifestyle level and you will find some exercise all the exercise that i showed you um, there are they are in that document the military one, it's not on the website. It's not like you cannot really find it, um, but you can ask your PSP staff to um, to uh, to share or to give you that document. Now, all the reconditioning specialists I know uh, throughout Canada, they do have that document, but if they don't, you can also send me an email and I will be more than happy to give you uh, that document. Uh, I didn't really show you the document. I didn't mean something really to see you. I think it's this one. I'm not sure. No, that's the guidelines. Oh, actually, I forgot to mention that. There's a lot of stuff I, I forgot to mention. This is um, the guidelines by the CSEP. You can find it on the website also um, uh, for uh, zero to year four. So they are there are some guidelines to be physically active, even if you're an infant, a toddler or a preschooler. Um, and these are the guidelines that you want to follow. So the CSEP developed the guidelines. I would recommend to go on the same website that I've showed you, ccepguidelines.ca, and then you go download these recommendation or guidelines. They're really easy to understand and really easy to, to follow. So you, you're also going to have like the range of average of sleep hours they do have, what they recommend for sitting and make your child move as quick and as soon as possible and they go till the age of four because right after four they're going to be uh, in kindergartens and they're going to like start being more moving and more actively um, physically active at the kindergarten but yeah these are the recommendation the only guidelines nope that's not the one sorry i have too much document in my um in my document oh this this one is only in french but uh, if you're French and you want to have that document, it's still free. It's still going to be on Kino Quebec. Um, but this is uh, for your grandparents. So grandparents, what they can do with the, with the child. And then they also give a program, uh, an exercise program to do with your child when you're a grandparent. So it's a, a really small document. Um, in, in, in Quebec, they call it Night de Grandir. Um, you can find that in the big document that they, they give to every uh, pregnant woman. Um, but also you'll have some document that you can give to your grandparents. Uh, finally, if I can find that document that I'm talking about, there you go. That is the document that was made by the CSEP, uh, CFMWS, and it's a really big document. Now, at first I was like, oh, that way, that, that's way too big. Um, it was made in 2003, but there is a lot of useful information in that document. So I would recommend to you, um, ask for that document so you can read it. Um, that's going to be a lot of reading when you're pregnant, but uh, there is, it, it, it's in that document that you will find the program 
that I showed you and also some nutrition uh, tips and, and information and also uh, some nip that kind of that's going to be uh, solved or resolved in that document. So yeah, I wanted to show you all the documents that are made because there are really good, uh, good documents that we can uh, use the reference because pregnancy, it's not a week thing, it's a, a month thing. So it's going to be for nine months. Even before you get pregnant, you want to like work towards getting pregnant. So it's good to get that information while uh, just before pre-pregnancy. So you can go and download that information and just uh, get all the information that you need before um, uh, getting pregnant. And also after you're pregnant, we didn't forget about you. We did some documents for you guys. So go ahead and download the documents. Um, I'll, uh, like I said, I'll, uh, the link are right below in the YouTube link. Uh, you'll, you'll see all the link that I use to get all these documents. The only document that you all find, it's the military one. The last one I just showed you that you can ask us and we're going to give it to you. Yeah. So that was a lot of talking, <laughs> a lot of information, a lot of, uh, documents. Jian, before we finish this, uh, podcast, do you have anything to add? Did I forget anything? Not that I know of. No. Nope. I think we're good. Excellent. So if you do have some information, uh, if you do have some questions, sorry, uh, feel free to send us an email and uh, we will be more than happy to answer it. Um, I hope this podcast was um, uh, really interesting um, and it's also good to use it uh, or just share the link to anybody you think that will be um, using that that information during their uh, pregnancy or postpartum. So uh, with that said, we're going to end up that uh, webinar. Next week it's going to be on shoes uh, that we're going to talk about. Um, we don't have a title yet. We didn't really even talk about it, me and Jian, yet. But uh, yeah, we're going to talk about shoes. And uh, if, you, uh, if you do have some questions before that, uh, let us know and uh, we can even prepare that podcast for next week. So under uh, that note, I wish you all um, some really nice weather and a nice week. And uh, we'll see you guys next next week. Right. See ya. See ya. See ya, everybody. <laughs>